Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. We are started on our reducing your carbon paw print. And we're doing this in honor of Earth Day, which is tomorrow. Um, an amazing time to focus on your impact on the environment, but not just your impact on the environment, but the impact your pet may have on the environment. And there are a lot of things that you may not consider when it comes to a carbon paw print and the impact our pets make on the environment. Pets make a huge impact on the environment from kitty litter, clay kitty litter, all the way up to the way the proteins are raised for our pet food. Um, pet food industry obviously is a huge industry and raising those proteins like cattle and chicken and ducks, all of those things take space and pastures and um, barns and all kinds of land space and um, certainly have an impact value to um, our environment. And so going with companies that maybe try to be more carbon neutral are things that are important to you. There are certainly things that are important to us because we think a healthier planet is a healthier place for all of us to live, including our pets. And our pets are very susceptible to things like cancer. We all know about that and that the cancer rate in pets has grown dramatically in the last 10 years. And we're, we're looking for ways constantly to do things healthier, not just for our environment, but also for our pets. And so one of the things that we found recently at a trade show, um, which we had already actually been having conversation about on a different level in our office, um, was a natural way to prevent fleas um, for our pets. As many of you know, we made the decision to pull um, pesticides from our store. Uh, we have stopped selling things like Soresto collars, Advantage, and Frontline because we feel like the risks with these products needed to be supervised under veterinary care. And that if you felt the need to use them, that you needed to do so with further direction and awareness that they do have really risky side effects. So we've been on the lookout for some more natural options for pets. And we already have wonderful things like Scout's Honor and um, we have Wonder Side and we have Earth Animal, all that offer some wonderful natural ranges of flea prevention. And this is one more step that can be used with all of those different layers. And um, I'd like to uh, introduce you to that company. We found them at Global and this is a box that you're going to learn all about today called Flea Destroyer. And Katya um, from Flea Destroyer is going to join us. Hey there. Um, thanks for joining us today <laughs> and um, talking all about this product. We're really excited to kind of um, bring awareness to this product and introduce our customers to this. As I was saying, um, as I was kind of introducing the product, we made the decision several months ago to drop all pesticides, chemical pesticides from our stores. Um, prior to that, we had been selling Soresto collars, Advantage, um, and Frontline. And we decided to drop all that because we started seeing some of these major side effects. We would see customers come back complaining of rashes on their pet's neck from the Soresto collars, um, you know, missing fur from the um, topicals. And so trying to find a better way and a more responsible way to um, keep fleas off of our pets. And we came across your company at Global and we're so excited that we did and um, now have the product in. So let's get started, I guess, on um, what Flea Destroyer is. Let's talk about that first. What's in this box? So in this box is 10 million of fleas natural predator. So a lot of people think about fleas and they're just like, oh, it's this problem. It just somehow shows up here and it's disconnected from it. But everything that happens in our world is very intricately connected with one another. And this is sort of bringing people back into an ecological awareness of fleas exist. Fleas are both a predator on your pets and they're also prey and their prey are beneficial nematodes. And so that's what we have in every box of flea destroyer that you get. You're gonna get 10 million beneficial nematodes. They're naturally occurring in healthy soil. <laughs> they're fleas natural predator. And when you reintroduce them to the soil, they're gonna go after the fleas outside for up to a year at a time. 
So what I hear you saying is like, if you have a yard that has a flea infestation, you're saying that what your yard has a lack of is beneficial nematodes of um, basically a predator for those fleas. You want something that's going to prey on those fleas and help bring your, your yard back into balance so that it cuts out the flea life cycle. That. Right. And so something that I really like to talk about is thinking about the community, right? The community in the soil. The soil is alive. There's billions of creatures that live inside of healthy soil. Now, unfortunately, we've had about 100 years of pesticides, um, which means we don't have a lot of healthy soil left. And so when people think of soil, usually they think of dirt. They think of just dust and they think of bad critters like scary bugs. And again, going back to the analogy of a community, if you if you carpet bomb a community, like what's going to be left? Only the scariest parasites can survive. Uh, you know, a, basically a bomb being dropped on them, chemical warfare. So this is introducing the good guys back into that community so that you have a balance going on. So they're hungry, they're ready to eat your fleas, um, and they're going to be happy living in your soils. So maybe this is like adding the prebiotics and probiotics that we add to that gut. It's like adding that to your soil. It's exactly <laughs> like that. It's a probiotic for the soil. Exactly. That's great. Well, I mean, I know that I have some personal connection to effects of chemical uh, pesticides on my pets that has made an impact in their health. And so it has definitely transitioned me to go 100% natural. Um, I also have a dog that is epileptic and I did start to notice the connection between pesticide use and her um, breakthrough seizures. And yeah. um, so that was about when we started kind of recognizing and connecting that there were some real side effects to those kind of things. But fleas can be nasty, um, nasty little boogers, and nobody likes a flea infestation. Um, so tell us how flea destroyer works. What is the process of getting these nematodes into the soil? So it's pretty simple. When you get one of your boxes, it's going to come with this box, and it's going to come with this cup. And then there's also going to be a cloth bag, which I don't have on me right now. Do you have a cloth okay, bag? Wait. I, I can help you with this because I know it's right from the top here. So yes, I can help you with that. Awesome. So you're also going to get that cloth bag and a thing of mixing instructions. It can yes, look a little bit overwhelming and we're actually working on rewriting them right now so that they'll be clearer next time. But basically it goes like this. You water your lawn outside. You take the contents of this container, the entire contents, you put it into the bag and you soak it. You brew it like tea. So you soak it for an hour in the water and that water lets the nematodes swim out. Give it a little bit of a, a swirl around, a little bit of a squeeze to help the nematodes get out. And after about half an hour to an hour, you have your concentrate. So think of this like tea concentrate. Before you drink that black tea, you wanna dilute it a little bit. So you can either do that with a hose end sprayer just pour that into the hose and sprayer container, add the hose on top and spray your yard. If you have a smaller yard or you want to focus on a specific area, you can hand dilute that in a watering can. So like a one to 10 ratio is good. If you wanted to pour the entire concentration of nematodes on one patch of grass, that's fine also. <laughs> not gonna hurt. You're not gonna mess things up if you do that. You just have a smaller area that you're gonna be paying attention to. Will right, you see just Will you see them? Like I think of, and I am probably showing my age when I say this, but I think of things like sea monkeys, you know, like swimming mm -hmm. all around like brine shrimp. Are you going to see the nematodes at all? You're not going to see the nematodes unless you have a microscope. So they're microscopic. Um, they're very, very small, um, but they're not quite bacteria. They're like bigger than that. <laughs> um, what you will see is the usually eye. the, sorry? Not visible to the eye. Like right. if I'm looking in that bucket that I've brewed, I'm not going to see little things swimming around. Right. So you're not going to see the nematodes, but you are going to see it get cloudy. So you will see, you won't see the individual nematodes, but you'll see sort of the effect of soaking them. Okay. Yeah, no, this is good. So people know what to expect. And also I feel like if people are thinking, well, I'm going to be putting something live into the soil, 
and they soak it like that and don't see anything moving, they may think that they've done something wrong. So just yeah. kind of giving the expectation that you're not really going to see an organism moving, but it'll just maybe change in appearance slightly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Perfect. Um, well, let's talk about some of the benefits of using this kind of a product over, say, um, using, like you said, a general pesticide that you're spraying out in your yard that's just going to kill off the flea, you know, is going to kill off the fleas, but not eat them. It's going to kill them. Let's talk right. about that and the effects that it has on other layers of that environment. So you sort of touched on this when you were talking about sometimes the negative effects of like the topicals that you put on your pet, right? They say, this is going to kill every flea and tick, but it's not going to kill your pet. Like there's some imaginary line between what's toxic for some life and not toxic for other life. So right. when you apply a pesticide, what you're doing is you're killing everything that it touches. <laughs> So any sort of bug that you have out there, earthworms, butterflies, bees, um, ladybugs, all of the good bugs that you like having around your garden, those are also going to go out. And it's also a one time, uh, it's a, the effects of it are once per application. So you apply it, it works, it hangs on for maybe a couple of weeks, keeps killing anything that comes by. And then the water washes it away. And then you have to reapply sometimes a month later, sometimes two months later, sometimes every six months, you know, but basically within a couple of months, you're going to have to reapply that pesticide. Um, but talk about also, how often you have to reapply the, the flea destroyer. How frequently is that something that has to be done? So flea destroyer is something that you can apply once a year. Because the nematodes eat the fleas, what they do is they're hanging out in the soil. They see the larva crawl by. They go inside the larva. They drop off a bacteria that kills the larva from the inside out. And then, <laughs> this is gross, these nematodes <laughs> inside of the larva eat it from the inside out and then reproduce inside of the flea. And then after a month, okay, you had one nematode go in to kill the flea. It's eating. It's reproducing. You have a thousand nematodes come back out. Wow. So that's why it's doing your yard for a whole year because it's constantly building the population every time it kills a flea you're building your nematode army that's your nematode army i love that <laughs> <laughs> building your nematode army but um yeah like i think that's it's such a cost savings when you think about that because i mean i think this is 54.99 um but you have this you're using once a year versus like you have to buy a seresto collar for every dog um, and I have seven dogs, so that's expensive <laughs> or, you know, you're, but like this is protecting everybody out in your yard and like broadcasting the safety over everybody. It's also protecting your yard from like outside introductions of fleas. So for example, um, a feral animal, a, a wild cat or a possum or a squirrel comes through your yard and some flea eggs fall off of it and into your yard. The flea destroyer, the nematodes are still living in the soil and they're ready to eat those fleas as soon as they come out of their eggs. So it's Whereas just constantly serving as protection. Yeah. Yep. Constantly protecting you. Well, and so as we've kind of said to everybody um, that we've been working with on this already is that when you go outside of your yard, of course, you don't have this protection anymore. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're going to a friend's house who you've told about this protection in their yards that way. Um, but you then have things like your wonder side or sprays to help um, keep your pet safe on the exterior when you're going places, hikes, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. Now, talk a little bit about the different places that you can put the fleet destroyer because it's not just soil. Right. right. I understand you can use gravel. So the important thing is that there's earth underneath. Okay. So if you have gravel over earth, great. Go ahead, apply it there. If you have mulch, you can apply it there. If you have any sort of plants, right, bushes, ivy, flowers, grass, you can apply it there. Um, 
even turf, if you have soil underneath it, you can apply it there. Um, underneath decks is a great place, right? There's usually dirt underneath decks and that's a place that wild animals love to nest. That's a great place to apply it to stop the, um, you know, the fleas from building up under there. Um, the only, the only place where it's not really going to be useful is concrete. So sure. these guys are alive. They need their habitat. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. So you, you need to put them in their habitat, but even if you're indoors, so I live in an apartment um, and I have some potted plants inside and sometimes I get fungus gnats. So I'll take flea destroyer and I'll apply it to my potted plants. And then they go in there and they eat all the fungus gnats so that I don't have little flies flying around my house. Oh, that's really cool. Didn't yeah. know you could do that. <laughs> Man, this is a whole new world for me. I've got um, a garden window in my kitchen and I've been having trouble with gnats <laughs> at night. Yeah. So I'm taking some home. And um, yes. this is going to cover, you said about 2000 square feet. Is that right? Right. So this covers about 2000 square feet. And if you have a really heavy infestation, we recommend concentrating it. So flea destroyer works best as a preventative. The best results that you can get is to apply this before you have a flea problem. Yeah. <laughs> and then you sure. won't have a flea problem and we can avoid the whole headache. But sometimes maybe you've just heard about flea destroyer. You already have an infestation in your backyard. It's not too late go ahead and apply it to your backyard. It's going to take, um, you're going to start noticing the effect within six to eight days, um, but okay. it's taking effect immediately. So within 12 to 24 hours, they're going to start killing the flea larva, all of the flea larva that they find in your yard. And then because they're working on the next generation, they'll go after adult fleas too, but adult fleas don't spend that much time on the same soil level. Mm -hmm. So they're killing the next generation. The adult flea life still lasts about seven days. So at the end of those seven days, once all those adults die, there's not going to be a next generation to take their place. For sure. Now, um, in talking about it, it, is there like a optimal time of day to put them out? Mm -hmm. Is there yes. an optimal temperature and like rain? If it's going to be bukus of rain, buckets of rain or something, is that going to affect them? Nematodes love rain. Nematodes love water. <laughs> so they move, they move through moisture and soil holds moisture, even if it's not wet. Okay. So you don't need to keep your yard wet for the nematodes to work. But if it does get wet, when it gets wet, when there's more moisture, they're going to get more active. And then when it gets drier, they're going to slow down a little bit. That's sort of how that goes. Um, they are photosensitive. So if you lived your whole life underground, and you saw the light one day, like the sunlight, you'd be like, ah, that's way too much. That's how nematodes feel. <laughs> <laughs> so we recommend applying um, flea destroyer at night. So not, you don't have to wait until midnight, but like at dusk, as the sun is setting, is a good time to start your process and then apply it everywhere. And then what's going to happen is overnight during those like six to eight hours before the sun rises, the nematodes are going to crawl under that first layer of soil and they're going to hide out there and they're gonna be ready to go for when the sun comes up the next day. Oh, okay. and then temperature. Um, so it, it, there's a couple things about this. When you're storing it, that's the time that they're most sensitive to temperature. So you wanna, if you're not gonna use them right away, we recommend refrigerating them. In the fridge, they're good for a year. So that's above 32 degrees, below like 50 degrees. If you have them just out on the shelf, they're good for six weeks, but that's mm -hmm. like ambient temperature. So try to keep it, you know, not above 80. <laughs> oh, um, sure. And yeah. then, and so then applying it, you know, um, this is also why we say, we say apply in spring, but we say apply at the beginning of your temperate season because everywhere is a little bit different. Um, like I said, they'll be affected within 12 to 24 hours. So mm -hmm. you can apply it whenever they're going to help you. <laughs> you're going to see an effect. But if you're having days where it's really dry and really hot, like, you know, 100, over 100 degrees consistently, over 110 degrees consistently and no water, that's mm -hmm. when the nematodes are going to start 
freaking out a little bit. <laughs> they're not going to be very happy and they're going to start burrowing deeper into the soil. Fleas usually live on the top part of the soil. Nematodes, if they don't like the weather, they'll burrow down. Okay. And just to clarify for customers, because honestly, when I first started doing research about nematodes, um, because I've heard, I heard about them a long time mm -hmm. ago. Um, and so I started doing research about them and got a little bit scared off because um, there's a parasite, roundworms, that's not connected to this product. And I think right. it's, it's something that scared me off, honestly, because I started doing research about nematodes and roundworms. They're called roundworms. And kind of, they're not connected, but it, it, it gets confusing. So just right. to clarify, because clarify. you're not getting a parasite that your pet can get out right. in the no. ground. No, no, no. So these nematodes cannot survive in anything larger than an insect larva. Okay. No, I think it's a perfect thing to clarify for customers who right. are not familiar with products like this, right. um, which was honestly me 10 years ago when I first started right. reading up on nematodes. I kept getting confused and that kept steering me away from thinking about them because I was and not understanding the layers. There's also nematodes are one of the most ancient organisms on Earth. They're millions of years old and there's tens of thousands of different kinds of nematodes. So when you look up just nematodes, you're going to hear about a bunch of different kinds. There's plant parasitic nematodes. There's the nematodes that you're worried about, like the roundworm and those. Mm -hmm. And then there's the beneficial nematodes. Totally different species. They're just yeah. kind of bug. <laughs> so these are the oh beneficial gosh. nematodes. We were at dinner um, at Global with another retailer, and we started talking about nematodes on, about this product. And we were uh -huh. like, oh, we're so excited about this product. He was like, no, I got a nematode in my toe once. No nematodes. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, so that's why I think it's so important to like, these are beneficial nematodes to really clarify the difference because nematodes can have a bad rap. <laughs> yeah, I say don't judge a bug by its cousin. Yes. Okay. No, they're very good ones of bugs. These are, these are the good ones. They can't survive inside of your body. They can't insi survive inside the body of your pets. It's too hot in there for them. It's too acidic. They're going to die. I tell people you could drink this if you wanted to. I just don't know why you would want to. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, but they're not, they're not going to harm you or your pet or your plants. They're actually going to go after the other nematodes that do eat your plants. So, okay. That's very cool to know. Um, now, it, what are some of the other organisms? Like we were talking, you said 230 organisms that mm -hmm. it attacks. Let's list some other of those things that it attacks and how it, uh, how it works on those items or right. on those bugs. So um, I'll give you a, a broad category. They go after insects with a larval stage in the soil. There's a lot of things that we think about as insects that either aren't insects technically or don't have a larval stage in the soil. So the first thing is they're not going to go after earthworms, ladybugs, butterflies, bees. That's that's not who they're going after. Okay. Are they going after they, mosquitoes? They'll go after mosquitoes if they're in water, but mosquitoes breed in water. Yeah. Okay. So if you have like a puddle in your yard probably the nematodes will get to that puddle. Mm -hmm. um, they can live in water, but they're not, they're usually not exactly in the same category. I did, but I did add nematodes to um, a pot that I had outside that had some still water in it mm -hmm. um, to have it go after the mosquitoes. And anecdotally, it worked. I haven't seen any mosquitoes <laughs> <laughs> since then. Um, but some of the other bugs that it goes after, they go after red fire ants. Okay. Um, they go after fungus gnats. They go after spider mites. Um, they go after the Japanese beetle. And they have some efficacy on ticks. People ask me about this. Ticks are technically arachnids. So they're not insects. They're a different category. So their larval stages are a little bit different. They spend more time on animals um, than some other kinds of insects. But if you have a high enough concentration in your yard, they will go after ticks. 
but we can't like promise like we're not you know we're it's not, not a as prediction. right it's not it, it will help it will probably help relieve your tick pressure mm -hmm. um but it's really more geared for fleas like we put together this specific formulation of nematodes to go after fleas mm -hmm. okay no that's good to know now one other question that i have personally um in my yard, I have used before the Wonderside sprays that are the essential oils to help prevent mosquitoes. Because mm -hmm. I'm terribly allergic. To, I say terribly allergic. To, I just get huge welts and they love to eat me. Um, and they really love to eat my oldest son. And so I try to always have my husband spray the essential oils out in our yard, that Wonderside, to help with the mosquito population. Will that in any way harm the nematodes? Are they affected at all by any of those natural products? They are affected by some essential oils. So there's um, an FAQ on our website that has a link to an article that talks a little bit more about them. Um, peppermint oil, garlic oil, I think clove oil too. The thing is, is um, even though they're less harmful than pesticides, the essential oils work in this like a, a similar way. They go after like the essential oils destroy um, a part of the um, how do you say this? And I don't know exactly the mechanics of this, but they like they kill the bugs. Using yeah, they do. Yeah, and there are um, certain layers of bugs that are that it goes in. I think like and and attacks them so like it it will kill this bug but not this bug kind of thing but it kills them right and it, it and it's like, like some and so i don't know exactly like well, neem oil is a really popular like organic mm -hmm. alternative um and i actually come from the organic gardening space so that's my <laughs> that's my background um but neem oil you know is a great alternative to glyphosate but it does still kill bees so it's like this. Um, it's still harming the environment. In still, a, I mean, it's still adding a, in a chemical to the environment. Like you're still, it's still within the same mentality of we're going to kill. And once mm -hmm. we kill it, the problem will go away. And that's just not true. <laughs> to make the problem, to be able to deal with the problem, you need to balance the problem. So that's why we say mm -hmm. add life rather than trying to facilitate death. Mm -hmm. For sure. No, I can understand that. And I mean, I think about, uh, again, this has absolutely nothing in the world to do with pets. But, um, you know, years ago, we had this mass spraying of DDT going on where we thought, oh, we're going to kill all of the mosquitoes and um, prevent malaria. And we're going to, you know, get in airplanes and spray it and go over neighborhoods and spray it while children are playing outside and all that kind of stuff. And we didn't stop to, con I know, right? It just horrifies me to think about that. It absolutely horrifies me to think about that, which is probably largely why we are where we are, right? <laughs> uh, because we did these things in completely unbalanced, a more balanced atmosphere or environment. But you did that and then you took the mosquitoes away, right? But then your bat population started to suffer because th their food population had been taken away. And other things were more in abundance because mosquitoes weren't there. So, you know, it just started to um, take away the checks and balances of a natural environment. And the, the DDT is the, a similar concept of like, like we talked about the, you know, the topicals. Like, oh, it's toxic for this living thing, but it's safe for that living thing. The way that they usually calculate that is um, by estimating toxicity. So they're like, mm -hmm. there's this percentage toxicity, which is toxic, very toxic to fleas, but less toxic to dogs. But they don't yeah. usually pay attention to bioaccumulation, right? Or yeah. ex like extended exposure. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you spray DDT to get rid of the mosquitoes, like you talked about, you have all of these side effects and you also end up killing a lot more than just mosquitoes. And what scientists are coming out with now is like, we've had insect apocalypse. There's, we've lost millions of insects, billions of insects, like over the last 30, 40, even shorter, even like 10 years due to 
a bunch of different things, mostly pesticides. Um, and insects are really important. They're the they're the bulk <laughs> of the <laughs> food they're chain. Like they yeah. Everything on top of it. For sure. Well, I mean, I know that I didn't really start considering the impacts of all of that. And especially when you're just putting it on your dog, you don't consider that what you're putting on your dog or your cat is impacting well, that. It's also um, with stuff that you put on top of your dog and your cat, when you wash it off, it gets into the water and it doesn't just go away. It goes from your water into the water system, into the water treatment plant and water treatment plants they can't get rid of pesticides. There's no like magic chemical you can mix with the pesticide to make it go away. They just mm -hmm. dilute it with all the other water, which is also full of a lot of other chemicals. And eventually they release it into the ocean. Yeah. And with a lot of these pesticides, they just continue, like they continue to accumulate in our waterways. Um, and then they end up, you know, if, if it's in killing the fleas on your back, it's also killing the phytoplankton in the ocean that are feeding yeah. the whales. And so it's yeah. it's it's really hard to think about how interconnected the world is, but like I think that's that's the challenge of our times is to remember that we are we're a part of this world and we have responsibilities to each other and we're dependent on our world staying healthy. Yeah. Well, and on top of it all, I mean, to take it on a more um individual basis. We all want our pets to live forever. I know. I mean, everybody's familiar with my Merida and my Aurora Rose who come up to the store a lot. Not here today with me, but um, my little Dachshunds. I have seven total, but um, those two girls come up to the office quite a bit. And I was even this morning as I woke up, I was laying there looking at Merida. She was, she had her head on the pillow and looked so precious asleep. And I just thought, I just want you to live forever. You just can never go anywhere. And, you know, I try my best to do everything I can to avoid the impacts that chemicals can have on their body. You know, they get a raw diet, they get, you know, so much. And, I, you know, honestly, until probably about four or five years ago, I hadn't really stopped to consider that some of these pesticides that I was giving them on a monthly basis were contributing to potentials for early death. Um, and for illness and injury to their body, because like you said, there's no consideration given to the um, bioaccumulations of these products in their bodies, so to their liver, which is like a sponge that just absorbs all these chemicals into their body and just kind of retains it and sits there and then yeah. redirects it into um, free radicals in their system that can become cancer and all those kind of things. Um, and so you know, when I slowed down and really started to think about all of those impacts, it was like, oh, no, I want to guard them from all of that um, as yeah. much as I possibly can. And I mean, not to say not just my animals, but my kids, too. They hug all over my dogs. And, um, you know, we all sleep with dogs at my house. So we're all up close and personal to these dogs. So when you're putting those kind of pesticides on your pet, you're also putting it really close to you. That's, I love that you pointed that out because I think a lot of people don't think, and it's a similar sort of train of thought that we were talking about earlier, but yeah, if you apply it to your pet and then you pet your pet, You're it's touching on your it. hand. Yeah. yeah. And then you touch your face and even on mm -hmm. your hand, like things can come into your body through your skin. Your skin is alive. It's an organ. Mm -hmm. There's pores on it. Anything you put on your hands can soak through if it can go in through their skin, it can ours too. Yeah. 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 For sure. Well, I know you mentioned a blog that you wanted to recommend people go check out. Yes. So if you want to post that link in the comments, um, mm -hmm. we'll definitely encourage people to go and look at that. I will say we have Flea Destroyer um, in both store locations. You can come pick some up. I'm taking a box home this weekend and I'm going to do it on Sunday evening. <laughs> um, at dusk. And um, I've learned so much and um, really enjoyed um, talking about this product. We're so excited that we found it. Um, we really had been having conversation in the office about this before Global. And then it, it was just kind of kismet that we found you guys and <laughs> that directed us your way and said, you really need to go check out this product. It fits in line with what you guys are. So I'm so glad that they did. Um, yes. I'm so glad that you found us. 
Yeah, so cool to be able to carry and um, have at this level to be able to provide for our customers. And it's a perfect time here to really start applying it because it's just started to get, you know, it's above freezing now pretty solidly. We probably won't have another freeze, or if we do, it'll be a pretty minimal freeze, like maybe 32. Um, but it's going to be like 85 today. So it's mm. perfect timing. Everybody's getting out there. I know I'm doing this on Sunday, planting and kind of paying attention to their yards. It's a perfect time to do that. Um, to prevent those those fleas from getting out there and multiplying because we really are getting into perfect temperature weather for fleas to yeah. multiply. Yeah, it's, uh, it's happening. It's going to take off. Um, I know that we've been getting a lot of interest too from people re remembering that fleas are coming back. So that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, I wasn't able to share this link in the oh. comments um, for some reason. Let's and see here. I'll get it. I'll get it shared. I will get it. Okay. Copy. Awesome. And yeah, thank you so much for having me on today. I love, I love talking with our retailers. I love talking with people who are care about their pets, care about their environment, um, and care about getting rid of fleas because I'm out to destroy them. Yeah. <laughs> They are pesky little boogers. I can remember, um, again, dating myself back in um, when I was a little girl. I used to love, this is back in the day when pets stayed outside a lot more. And we're not necessarily up in our beds and um, having the kind of lifestyles that they do now. Um, but we had a basset hound. And I used to love to bring her inside. And I would sneak her inside at night up to my room to sleep in my room. And oh. I Oh, it was terrible. It was a terrible idea because I would inevitably get a flea infestation in my room every year. And I'd be, I mean, it was like you'd walk in my room and fleas would hop all over your feet because it just, oh. there was nothing. I mean, it was, our, our yard must have been terribly unbalanced at that point in time. Uh, but I'm sure that was like the heightened amount of time that we were just using pesticides like crazy without any abandon or regard. And um, I mean, there were fleas. I can remember my mother just like, stop sneaking the dog in here. <laughs> stop getting the dog in the bed. But I just didn't know. I didn't know about that layer. And I just wanted her to come up in my bed and snuggle. Um, but I, so I'm it's ever sweet. so thankful to have a natural way to prevent that from happening in my house. Cause they definitely all sleep in my, you know, all of our dogs will sleep up in the bed with us. So having a way to prevent um, those kind of flea buildups uh, on our pets and in our home, because fleas certainly carry, you know, some dangers for our pets, tapeworms and things like that. Um, if they ingest the fleas. So, you know, you definitely want to get rid of the pesky critters. Um, yeah. But from a natural standpoint, like you said, where we're rebalancing our yard so that we don't have the infestations. Yeah. Any parting words, anything you feel like we haven't covered, any information you feel like you want to get out there? Wow. Um, we covered a lot of information. We really did. Uh, <laughs> um. You know, off the top of my head, I think that we got to most of it. I think I'll just re-emphasize you want to apply Flea Destroyer at night. Um, mm -hmm. You want to apply it, like ideally you apply it at the beginning of your temperate season. If you apply it during a flea infestation, that's also fine. Um, one application a year is enough. But if you, you know, if you end up applying it right before an extreme heat wave or a freeze, um, you'll probably want to apply it again after that. So um, that's like if it gets very, very cold. It won't anymore now, at least where you are, because it's so hot. Um, but Quick question. Do you have to apply it all at once? Yes. Like this container, yes. you can't like split it. You need to do it all at one time. Right. So the nematodes, oh. <laughs> um, one of the reasons why flea destroyer is different is because we're able to store it for four to six weeks unrefrigerated. Other nematode products only last 30 days in the fridge. Okay, that's okay. part of the reason why they haven't really taken off um, in the last 10 or 15 years. So this is a new innovation. Um, and the vermiculite that they're packaged in keeps them safe a little bit from the heat, but primarily from the sun. So what they do is they all hide in this like little ball in the middle of this container where they're farthest away from all of the heat, so all of the okay. light and heat sources. So okay. if you just take a scoop out of the top, 
there's a good chance you're not getting any nematodes. Okay. No, that's real. I really had not thought to ask that question, but I was just thinking, and if you were just trying to do some potted plants or something, you know, you really need to plan to use it all. And whatever you don't use on your potted plants, just put out in your yard or something like that. Yeah. But okay. Well, in about 2000 square feet, that should certainly cover most yards. Um, you know, most fenced in yards. And so I actually will say one more thing. If you have a larger yard than that, um, one thing to keep in mind, if you don't want to immediately go out and buy, you know, 10 boxes of Fleet Destroyer, which you could, but if you don't want to do that, <laughs> if you want to do that <laughs> focus on the fleas habitat. So fleas and nematodes have been co-evolving for millions of years. They have the same habitat and they both like places that are shady, that are moist, that are sandy, and that get a lot of animal traffic. So your dog's favorite place to hang out outside or somewhere where there's feral animals coming through. So focus on those four areas. Um, if you have like a very, uh, if you have a huge piece of property, we say focus on the area directly around your house where your dog spends the most time so that you have defense there. Um, and then, you know, we say apply every year to keep the population up because they'll burrow down to the soil to escape temperatures they don't like. But once you apply them, since they're always increasing, even after they go down into the soil, some of them are going to come back up. Not all of them, mm -hmm. but some of them are going to come back up looking for food. Um, so if you also want to take time and spread it out over the course of the year, you know, first apply around your house, maybe wait a couple of months and then go and apply a little bit farther or even every year expanding the areas that you're treating. Sure. And again, I mean, even if you were to, like me with seven dogs, even if you were to buy three boxes of this, you're still saving money if you consider what you would have been doing topically or um, giving pills or any of those kind of things, you're still saving money from the standpoint of you're not having to apply this directly to any one pet. So when you mm -hmm. apply this to your yard, you're protecting all of your pets instead of just one pet. Um, yeah. So um, really still a cost savings, even if you have to buy it um, a couple of times. Yeah. Um, for sure. Okay. Well, we really appreciate you joining us. And, um, you know, I would challenge those people who are out there listening um, or watching this after the fact, if you have questions, please post them in the chat. Just like always, we will follow up with any answers to any questions you might have. If we don't have the answers, we'll reach out to Flea Destroyer and uh, get the answer for you because it is a new product to us. Um, but it's a really, really cool product. And I just don't know why the whole world doesn't do this. Because honestly, <laughs> if we all start respecting and regarding Mother Nature as um, a pretty smart being, we would all be a lot better <laughs> up, right? Because she really knows what she's doing. She really yeah, she does. Really knows what doing. When we try to meddle in it is when things go awry. And we, history should tell us that. And somehow we still think we know better. Happy and Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. One of the reasons I'm so happy to have you guys today is really kind of focusing on that. We always are conscious about um, finding sustainable products here and environmentally friendly. Um, those are things that are really important to us uh, because they're important to the environment that our pets live in and that our families live in. And so we try to really encourage our customers to reduce their carbon paw print as much as possible. And this is a big, big paw print, you know, um, going from a pesticide layer to a natural layer is a big move um, to really, really help um, get back to a more balanced ecosystem. So, well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you Those of you who are out there watching, ask questions if you have them. Come into either store location. Um, if for some reason, you know, High Point Road does not have as many, um, but if for some reason we do have plenty here and we can get them from one of our distribution channels. So if for some reason we're out, we can quickly get a new one for you. Um, so come in, pick up a flea destroyer and treat your yard and um, let us know if you have any questions. So, well, thank you so much and happy birthday and have a great Friday. Thank you. You too. Bye, Bye now. Bye.